In this tutorial I'm going to talk about scripts and functions in MATLAB. So you've seen me in the last few tutorials typing commands because I don't know why I'm obsessed with x equals 3 and y equals 4 into the command window and then building up my calculations as I go along. The issue is that if I make a mistake somewhere along the line, let's say I don't want to go z is equal to um, x to the power of 2 plus y to the power of 2, all of this to the power of 0 0.5, or this basically means square root, this is Pythagoras' theorem. If I made a mistake somewhere up above where I think, oh, that's not what I wanted, I actually wanted to have x equals 5 and y equals 12. Um, by the way, uh, just to let you know a shortcut, the reason I'm getting back to my old commands quickly is I'm pressing the up arrow on my keyboard and it goes up through the command history till I get back to the um, uh, last command which I wanted. Um, so the issue is if I'm just typing in the command window, if I make a mistake somewhere along the way, uh, it can be a pain to go back and re-enter all the commands again just to get back to where I was. So what we do is we create a script. So over on the left and top left hand corner, there's a few different ways to do it. You can go file, uh, file, new script, or you can type control N, or you can hit the little blank page here on the left. I'm not sure exactly what it looks like. I think it's probably a bit more obvious in the 2012 version. And this will open up uh, the text editor or M file editor. Um, I have two options. I can work in a separate window where, as this is here, or else I can dock it into. If I if I'm just writing short scripts, I can dock it in to the programming environment, and I can see it uh, paired up beside all of the windows, arra tiled, arranged, so I can see it easily. So in here, then I might go x equals three, uh, y equals four. I'm putting semicolons on the end so it doesn't print in the screen. Z is equal to. Uh, x to the power of 2 plus y to the power of 2, all of that to the power of 0 0.5. And I'll leave the semicolon off here so I can see it. Now, this is a file called an M file. I'll type it on the screen here, actually. Let's show you comments. I can type a comment using the percent sign and type this is an M file script. So the comment here and the percent sign starts a comment line and all that means is that when MATLAB, when the MATLAB interpreter tries to run the code inside the file, it will ignore a comment line. So I've typed a percent sign. There's also a shortcut that you can do. If you click anywhere on a line and hit Control R, uh, it will comment the line and Control T will uncomment. It's pretty useful in case I want to comment multiple lines at once. I highlight them. I hit Control R or Control T to remove the comment. Anyway, now I've taken co code which I used to run in the command window and I've entered it into a script file, an M file, and I can run the M file instead and make changes inside the M file when I want to. Uh, so how do I save it? Well, you can click save or use control S, which I prefer to do. It gives me the save as dialog box and I can save it as, uh, let's call it my script. Um, a naming convention, because with variables, just to tell variables and functions and scripts apart, normally you name variables with a lowercase as the first letter, but functions and scripts you should name maybe with a capital letter as the first letter. So let's call this my script. Um, so you see again, it has to be one word or one string, string of characters, or no spaces. And I make it easier to read by making the first and then every um, word, first letter capitalized. There we go. So it's now saved in a file called my script, which just appeared in the current folder over here on my operating system. Uh, I can run it in several ways. The most obvious one that people use is hit the little play button. Uh, so run my script.m. Or it even tells me there I can use uh, press the F5 button on the keyboard. Or just to show you, um, you can do it programmatically by typing in the command window my script and I get z is equal to 5. In fact, I could also run my script from inside my script, so it gets a bit of a, it's a, bit of a Russian doll effect where um, once it's defined, it can be run from anywhere. Uh, all right, so that's a script, and we can type things in there, no problem. 
And if I want to make changes, then I might say, oh, I actually meant y x is 5 and uh, y is 12, maybe. And I save it, and then I run it, press up, enter, and I get 13. So there's still a little bit of labor involved here, because when I want to change things, um, I'm running from the command window, but when I want to change something now, I've got to travel over to the text editor over here and make a change. So we can do something slightly different, and we can um, do what's called make a function. So let's save this as, save as, so this was called my script, and I'm going to change it to be my function. M. And what's different about a function, I'm just going to change the comment, this is an end file function. What's special about a function is that you pass the inputs in, it's a bit of a black box, you pass the inputs in, some operations happen and then the answer gets returned and everything that happens inside once the function is finished executing gets destroyed. So let's do this. I tell it, I tell the interpreter this is going to be a function, whatever follows. Um, I know I need the function name. It should match. It's probably preferable to have one function. You can have multiple functions in a single file, but I prefer if you use one function per file and the function name matches the file name. Uh, my function. Okay. Now this will run, no problem. I can copy this text, put it in the command window, hit enter, and it runs. But really, I'm not using the value of having a function because I haven't specified any inputs or outputs. So let's do this. Let's specify some inputs, and I'll call these inputs x, comma, y. So that's what's called the input variable list. And now I don't need to specify x and y here. And then you might say, how does the file save that? How does the file know? what the inputs are. Well, when I run the function, this is only what's called the function prototype. It just tells MATLAB what the function look, should look like when it's called. I need to copy this part without the function. I can paste it in the command window and I can put in x and y values here that I want. So before x was 5 and before y was 12. And then it runs just fine. In addition, I could say, and it doesn't have to match, I could say, let's say a is equal to 5 and b is equal to, let's make a bit more room here so you can see, and b is equal to 12. And now I can run my function, but I can put in a and b. Or I could put in b and a, doesn't matter for Pythagoras' theorem, which is what's inside the function. But still, how am I getting this value back? Here is z or z. And you see that it's, it's in the command window, let's clear Z, it's gone, okay? So over in the workspace, Z doesn't exist anymore, but when I run the function, it prints on the screen, but it doesn't exist. The reason it prints on the screen is because inside the function file, I don't have a semicolon. If I put a semicolon there, it will no longer print, and I now have no knowledge of what Z is. So I need to return Z from the function. So I put square brackets here, and I have my function equals some function of x and y. Save that. Now when I run it, um, what's x and y? Well, let's clear x and y as well. So now if I run this, it's going to crash because x and y don't exist in the workspace. But I had an a and b, and so let's put in a and b. Now I get Z is 13, and Z is returned to the workspace as 13. And I don't need to just, I mean, I could also make a um, W equals uh, whatever, X plus Y. And I could also return W. So I can have a, a number of inputs and a number of outputs. Um, they don't need, to, in the output list, they don't need to be separated by commas, but it's probably good practice to do so. But in the input list, they, they must be commas. So let's now have um, Z and W. Um, run that, and there's W gets returned. And it's printing on the screen only because, not because I've missed a semicolon inside the function file, but because when I ran the function in the command window, I didn't put a semicolon on the end. So if I put it on now, I don't see anything printed to the screen anywhere, but W and Z 
over in the workspace are still returned. What will happen if I forget to put one of the output variables? Uh, the function runs just fine, um, but it, I don't overwrite the value of w. So if I were now to change a and b to be, say, 3 and 4, um, z will change to 5, but the w value won't change. It didn't get returned. Um, but if I did put both of the outputs, it does. Um, what else would I like to talk about here? So we've just covered m files and scripts, comments, naming and running scripts, uh, functions, input and output argument lists, and let's talk a little bit about the path and then built in functions and the help. So you might notice that I'm in the current folder, which is from, in my case, I've chosen to work in MATLAB video tutorials where I'm creating these uh, videos for you. And um, if I should change directory to somewhere else, let's go somewhere else, right? Um, back to the MATLAB window. You see in this folder there is no function or script called my function or my script. So if I try to run uh, my function now, I get an error. It says undefined function or method my function for input arguments of type double. What MATLAB is saying is I understand that you're trying to run this function called my function, but I can't find it. Please help. So there's two ways to help MATLAB find it. One is the sort of simple way is to go back to the folder where it exists and make that the current folder but another way so you can work in, in the folder which doesn't contain the file contain contain the file is to go to file and um, in top left hand corner set path and in here and now you understand when you see this you understand why matlab can find all of its files there's a huge huge list of folders where all the matlab files are contained and we can add folders to that um, so my, I might add a folder, and I can choose my video tutorials, if I can find it. Um, sorry, bear with me, I know where it is. Um, it's in courses. Okay, so I can add this folder, and there it is, added at the top, and save it. Um, oh, I know what's wrong here, this is a... Uh, I need to run MATLAB as administrator. This is a Windows 7 problem. But if you've got the permissions, you can click yes and it will save. Uh, apologies, um, a bit of a hitch. But it will save and add that folder. And when you can, when you run the file or script from anywhere in the computer, MATLAB will be able to find it. So that's a, a an operating system permissions problem. Okay, so that's the path. Um, even if that example didn't work out perfectly. Next up is built-in functions. So, so far I've just showed you variables and operators in a previous tutorial, and I've shown you how to write your own functions, but MATLAB has a whole bunch of functions, in fact, a huge library. Let's go and have a look at them. So we'll type help desk and open up the MATLAB help. And here we see an absolute huge list. If I go here, MATLAB functions, um, this gets deeper and deeper. Let's go to desktop tools and development environment. Just in this area, there's a whole bunch of functions which MATLAB has, and so it goes. Uh, mathematics, and the list is even longer. Just to give you an, an idea of some of those functions, x, let's say x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. I could use a MATLAB function called mean of x, which would give me the mean value. I can use this is a very non-exhaustive list, the minimum value, uh, the maximum value, standard deviation of x, and so on and so on it goes. Uh, the trick to being a very good MATLAB programmer is to learn a lot of these functions to save yourself the work of, of having to do write the function yourself. Um, it can take years and years to accumulate a knowledge of probably even half of the MATLAB functions which are contained in here. Um, so that's built-in functions. Uh, with time, you'll get better and better. Some important ones as well. So I've just shown you uh, mean, min, max, and standard deviation. Um, about arrays is the length of x. There are four elements in x, so the length of x is four. But remember, every array is also a matrix. This in, in the case of x here, it was a one by four. So one row, four column matrix. Um, I could talk for hours and hours about built-in functions, uh, but we just don't have time. So please go and explore the MATLAB help and have a look at some of the many impressive functions which have been written on your behalf.